This is D Hunter bringing another action figure review. Today we're looking at the Mattel Multiverse Signature Collection Joker from the Dark Knight Trilogy. This is a Heath Ledger Joker figure. The Signature Collection is typically from live action, various versions from all of DC's history. We've gotten Batman Forever Batman, The Flash from the old TV show, Wonder Woman from the old TV show. Now we've got this Joker, as well as Danny DeVito Penguin from Batman Returns in this wave. Now I must say, when I first saw this figure, possibly last year at San Diego Comic Con, I was a little bit disappointed. I'm sure this figure is going to be way better than Movie Master and a pretty good figure in itself. But boy, have they done this guy to death. We have so many different 6 and 7 inch versions of this Joker. I was a little disappointed because they could have used that slot for so many characters I'd rather have than this guy. So anyway, let's check out the packaging here. This guy here, you can see him. Packaging he comes with some cards, a pistol, as well as a semi-automatic weapon. He has a stand in the background and a little cardboard insert of some sort that will fit behind the stand. You can see here, DC Multiverse, Joker, up top, Signature Collection, this package is a tiny bit larger than the standard multiverse. Here's on the side, Ledger Joker, specifically from the Dark Knight. Here he is in the back, you can see we've got Penguin as well as Joker, two-figure wave. Joker on the other side. In the bottom we've got barcode and a bunch of credits. I personally got my figure from Amazon.com. They had the pre-order up a little while ago. Put them in there, they're finally starting to hit. It's $25 pretty much with Prime. That's a standard retail price for the Signature Collection. So, let's go ahead and check this guy out compared to a few other packages to see how different the Signature Collection is to the standard package. And let's open him up and check out if he delivers. And then just so you know, here's the Signature packaging. They've slightly changed the design of it just by a hair. This one's like a signature at the top with one little set of words. This one seems to have it repeated over and over again. This is the Batman Forever Signature Collection packaging, exact same size as you can see. Just as wide as each other. So in addition to the Signature Collection, there's also the regular figures from Multiverse. And as you can see, they're a little bit smaller packaging wise than the Signature Collection. In addition to that, there's also the Platinum Collection. They seem to have given up on that one already. Notice this package is taller than the other one, as well as, really it's not wider, the same width, but just kind of interesting to have three different multiverse lines going on at once and getting ready to be down to zero by the time next year begins. So, let's open this bad boy up. You may have noticed that I got two of these figures. One of them is obviously going to be opened, and one of them is going to stay in my complete, unopened Batman and related multiverse collection. Here he is, taking his rightful place in front of my comic collection with the other recent releases. Here's my entire Bat-related multiverse collection in the newer blue packaging. You can see on the top shelf there, we've got all three of the signature collection. Really excited for the next ones. And then we got some other Batman M related, saving a little bit of room for future releases. Now you may look at the bottom shelf and wonder why I have Superman, Martian Manhunter, and Jessica Cruz in my Batman unopened collection. It's because each of them has a piece of Clayface in there, so they have the rightful place in my Batman M related unopened collection. All right, well, now that we got this figure out of the package, here he is with all of his accessories laid out. Now, this is a signature series figure, so they always come with this really, really fancy stand. You can hold your accessories inside of it, but we'll take a detailed look at that in just a minute. He also comes with a machine gun, a pistol with an extended clip that's removable, a knife, and some playing cards. Before we take a look at the accessories, let's check out the actual figure. 
Now this is not the first time that Mattel has made a Heath Ledger Joker figure from the Dark Knight. They had the whole line, the Mattel Movie Masters back in the day. A little bit of smaller scale. This guy appears to be more the DC Universe Classics and Multiverse size. And of course we'll check that out later in the video. Look at his face here. Nice sculpt. You can see the wrinkles in his forehead. Darkness around his eyes. Different shades of green in his hair. Kind of crooked, uneven smile. He's got his shirt, his tie, vest, all different colors. Looking pretty good. Purple jacket, different shade of purple gloves. Inside of the jacket, it's red. See his striped pants. Almost see like some blue socks in there, although I'm pretty sure that that's just the plastic underneath. And his shoes, overall looking pretty good. And we'll have to see, is he better than the previous release? And I'm hoping the answer is yes. So first let's take a look at the actual stand. Now I must say, I'm not much of a stand guy. I like my figures to be free with nothing below them on the shelves, roaming the city, etc. But as far as stands go, this is a pretty impressive stand. Now here's the base of it. Notice it says the Joker. And up top we've got the DC logo here. And a bunch of holes inside of here. Those holes are intended for the peg that you can put into his foot. You can kind of pick where it goes. It goes here, you can swap it to here, you can use two of them, one of them, however you want to do it. It does come with a bag full of extra pegs if you want to use all of them. Notice there's a pretty big hole in the back here. It does come with a plug for this hole if you prefer not to use the sort of flight stand piece to keep it as basic as you can. But if not, you can pull that out. And it does have this, not transparent, but slightly clear back part. Put it together. Put it inside of here. And it has a little peg on the top. Figure has a hole in the back. It can definitely support him standing. You can probably have him into all kind of cool kicking in poses that the Joker really shouldn't be into flying poses and stuff like that. But it's so far, pretty cool stand. Of course we do have this cardboard piece in the back. Insert it in. And then you have a nice little display piece for your Joker. Now if all the multiverse figures came with this, and I display my figures that way, maybe I'd use it, but this is gonna end up going to a fodder bin at one point. One other really cool feature a stand has, this is probably the coolest feature about it, it can open up and you can store all your stuff in here. So I'm gonna take this bag full of pegs, put it inside of here, and then shut this thing. Now that can be very useful for some smaller pieces. This guy does come with an extremely small knife, as well as the clip, his Joker cards, all that stuff can go in here and you won't risk losing it. So I'm going to give this stand thumbs up from a not stand guy. So now let's check out the actual accessories that are his. He comes with a lot of familiar items as far as ledger jokers go. The knife, we've got plenty of those. This machine gun, got a couple of those from various ledgers over the year. Pistol extended clip. Pretty cool thing. This is the first time I've ever seen Mattel make a clip for a gun that's removable, at least as far as I know, so I'm pretty excited to check that out. And then playing cards. Absolutely love a Joker that comes with playing cards. Great accessory for him. Definitely familiar. Can't wait to check these things out up close and in more detail. So first let's take a look at his knife. This thing is pretty small. Not too much to say about it. Black handle. Silver part up top, little bit of groove in the middle here. And then here he is holding his knife. His left hand is open, but it's very small, able to hold a small accessory like this. His right hand can hold something larger. I think it looks pretty good. So here's this guy's knife compared to all the other Heath Ledger Dark Knight Joker knives that I've gotten over the years. Now these two here I believe are the previous Mattel versions. You can see this one looks a lot nicer. I've gotten these from Figure Arts, Mafex, NECA, and Mattel Dark Knight Jokers over the years. So next here's his machine gun. You can see here it's got some nice detail. There's some grooves on the barrel here. It's got the clip sticking out. Kind of got a wooden handle. Other side. Looking pretty decent. 
And then here he is holding his machine gun. Of course, his right hand is able to hold a weapon pretty easily. Looks pretty nice. One thing I'm going to notice is this gun is very, very soft. You can see the material here. The whole thing is kind of bendable, especially the barrel. And then he can hold his gun with one hand, or he can hold it with two hands, use his left hand to support the other side. And then here's his machine gun compared to all the other Dark Knight Joker machine guns I've accumulated. Next, here's his pistol with the extended clip. Pretty cool item. You can see the top here, it's got some silver. Then we've got some grooves in the handle, we've got the trigger. And then of course we've got the extended clip. You can see it does remove, it has a sort of peg that goes into the hole. A little bit of silver at the bottom there. Overall, pretty cool feature to be able to remove that. If it only came with a second one to slap a new one in there, that would be really nice. Stays in there pretty stable. Enjoying it so far. This is a first for Mattel as far as the multiverse goes. And then as you can see here, here he is holding his pistol. Looking pretty good. Love that weapon. And then here's this pistol with the extended clip compared to all the other Dark Knight Joker pistols with extended clips that I've accumulated. Next, let's check out his Joker cards he comes with. This is a whole hand of cards put together. The detailing on it, we've got Joker on one side, and unfortunately on the other side, we've got this stupid thing that says China kind of disrupting the sort of aesthetic of this thing. And then as you can see, his left hand that has the smaller grip, he's able to hold the cards just like the knife. Looking pretty good in there. You can even see what he'd be seeing from his point of view. And as you can see here, here he is playing cards with some of his Joker thugs. Unfortunately, I couldn't sit this Joker down because of his jacket, but it still works okay with him standing and playing with them. And then here are this guy's Joker cards compared to a ton of other Joker cards I've gotten with various Joker figures over the years. Now that we've taken a very in-depth look at his accessories, next let's check out the height of this figure. Now this is a multiverse figure. They're typically running between six and seven inches tall. So this guy here, Looks like he's sitting at between a six and a quarter, a little bit taller than that. Probably six and three eighths inches between six and a quarter and six and a half inches tall. We will get to compare him to the Movie Master Joker here in a little bit to make sure that he is the multiverse DC Universe Classic scale and not the Movie Master scale. Next, let's check out this guy's articulation. Let's start out with his head here. Of course, his head, it can turn around, no problem. It can really not tilt much from side to side can look down pretty nice and up really not too much his shoulders they can go out more than 90 degrees which is pretty nice completely up and down all the way around no problem there he's got a bicep cut here he's got double jointed elbows he can reach all the way to his face he can cover up his mouth scratch his head etc etc his wrists of course it can swivel and it's hinged as well he does have an ab crunch inside of here. Go in and out, really not too much though. He's got a traditional waist swivel below that. His legs then go out 90 degrees, absolutely no problem. Pretty nice, very smooth. Then go forward that far and back, really not too much. He's got a thigh cut below that. Then he's got double jointed knees. Go all the way to the back there. Then he's got his feet, of course, they can go around, then go up and down, and they can rock a tiny bit. Next, let's check him out compared to a bunch of other action figures. We'll check him out compared to all the other 6 and 7 inch Joker figures in my collection. We'll see which Joker thugs fit in best with him, just to see how he fits in scale-wise and style-wise with the other companies. So first of all, here he is with the old Mattel Movie Masters Joker. This figure came out more than 10 years ago. I don't know if you guys remember, but if you were trying to get this figure when it first came out, it was impossible to get. 
I believe these came out just before the movie. Heath Ledger had just died. The first batch was out. You couldn't get a Joker to save your life. They ended up being recalled the first wave. And then it was a month or two before they finally got out. These guys were going for 60 plus bucks on eBay. It was a huge rush on this figure. And then after a few months, you could get them for $10 pretty easily. So I actually got two of these guys back in the day. This one here was played with pretty hard. I remember his chain had broken off. And then I got this second one. I wanted to paint his neck white. I kind of wanted to have sort of a comic accurate ledger-ish Joker. That was my goal with these guys. So let's check out the differences. Obviously this guy's way, way taller. It always bothered me that the Movie Masters were of a shorter scale than DC Universe Classics in general. So this guy's probably gonna fit in great with those figures. And we will check that out later in this video. So let's look at the articulation differences. There's obviously zero reuse between these guys. Feet totally different. He just goes up and down. No tilt at all and he's got a little bit of a tilt going on. Double jointed everything on this guy. His knees are double jointed whereas his are single jointed. They've both got the th sort of thigh cut. The crotch style is completely redesigned. This is the sort of modern multiverse. This is the old DC Universe classic ish design. This guy looks like he has no ab crunch at all, and this guy sure does. Double jointed elbows, whereas this guy did not have them. So overall, a pretty healthy upgrade for your Ledger Joker. And then here he is next to an SH Figure Arts Dark Knight Ledger Joker. You can see this guy is quite a bit taller than the Figure Arts figure. Me personally, not super fond of the figure art scale, a little bit smaller than the majority of my collection. And then here he is next to the Mafex 1.0 and 2.0 Dark Knight Ledger Jokers. You can see they're both a little bit shorter than the multiverse figure, but not by too much. This Joker 2.0 is one of the best. He's an absolutely fantastic figure. It's either a toss up between him and the NECA one as far as being my favorite. And then here he is next to the NECA version of the Dark Knight Ledger Joker. The NECA is the tallest one at 7 inch scale, but this multiverse one is not too far off. There's probably less than a quarter inch difference between these guys. This one is possibly my absolute favorite one just because he's the tallest and he fits in with some of my 7 inch figures which is pretty nice. But that Mafex 2.0 is really good as well. This guy's probably going to be my third favorite right here. He's a pretty nice figure all things considered, especially for the price point. So here he is compared to all my other purple coat Dark Knight Jokers together in order from smallest to largest. From left to right we've got the figure arts, then the Mattel Movie Masters, then Mafex, then Mafex, then Mattel Multiverse, and then the NECA. Now here is the old Mattel Movie Masters Joker compared to a bunch of DC Universe Classics and Multiverse figures. As you can see here he is shorter than them. I really, really did not like how Movie Masters couldn't quite blend in with DC vs. Classics. Me, I'm not picky, so I blended them like crazy in my collection, but there is a noticeable difference. And as you can see here, here's the newer Mattel Multiverse Dark Knight Joker compared to DC vs. Classics and Multiverse figures. And yes, he does scale in with them. It took Mattel over 10 years to correct that, but they finally gave us a properly scaled Dark Knight Ledger Joker to fit in with your DC Universe Classics collection. And then here he is next to the other figure from this wave. This is the Danny DeVito Batman Returns Penguin. They're both from live action, but from completely different universes and incarnations of Batman live action. The Nolan films and the Burton films. I know some people aren't super fond of this penguin, but I think he looks great. It's about time we finally got one of these guys in the 6 inch scale. Now as far as we know, this could be the end of the signature line. Rumors had it that we were going to be getting a Chris O'Donnell Robin and a George Clooney Batman. But as the year comes closer to an end, it's looking less and less likely. I do hope that McFarlane is able to somehow continue these live action signature figures because I'm really loving them quite a bit. Next I'd like to compare into all the different Joker figures on my 6 and 7 inch collection starting with the smaller companies and working their way larger just to see which ones he's most comparable to. This here is a Yamato Joker. It's a pretty old Japanese import and it doesn't have a lot of articulation. The main reason I got this guy is because he's come with some pretty cool accessories for my Joker base. 
And then here he is next to several SH figure arts, Joker figures. He's definitely taller than them, especially the live action versions. Next here he is compared to some Mattel Batman Missions Joker figures. This is a 6 inch basic line that's in stores right now. And then here he is next to some Power Attack Joker figures. This was another 6 inch basic line that was out a couple years ago. You may notice there's three of the sort of punk looking Joker on the right. I personally at one point bought them for Joker thugs, thought they looked more like a Joker thug than the actual Joker himself. And then here he is next to some DC Direct and DC Collectibles Batman the Animated Series Jokers. DC Direct made these a little bit of a smaller scale than their traditional 7 inch figures. And then here he is next to several Mattel Movie Master Jokers. You may notice that there are a bunch of the Bank Robber Jokers. I use them as Joker thugs in my action figure world. I actually also bought several of the Honor Guard Joker to use as various cops but they don't look like Joker anymore in my collection. And then here he is next to the DC Collectibles, DC Icons Joker figure. DC Icons was sort of an experiment from DC Collectibles. They tried a very new scale, which is smaller than their traditional 7-inch offerings, and it failed. And I hate to say it, I'm glad that it failed. These were nice figures, but I sure didn't want to start my entire collection over again. And then here he is next to a bunch of different Mayfex Joker action figures. Same deal as before with the Bank Robber Joker as well as the Honor Guard Joker. And then here he is next to a couple of Mezco 112th Soft Cloth Goods action figures. And then here he is next to all the different Mattel DC Universe Classics and Multiverse Joker figures that I have. I'm missing the majority of the Joker figures that were pre-DC Universe Classics, such as DC Super Heroes or the old Batman line. One here on the far left is from the old Batman line. And then here he is next to a bunch of DC Direct and DC Collectibles Joker figures. These are the ones they've released in the most recent past several years. And then here he is next to a bunch of older DC Direct Joker figures. And then here he is again next to the NECA Dark Knight Joker action figure. This is one of the tallest Jokers in my collection, and I really do like the fact that he's a full 7 inch scale figure. Next let's check him out with some Joker henchmen and see which kind fits in best with him. Here he is next to some DC collectibles, DC essentials, Harley Quinn, and then Mime and Marionette from the Doomsday Clock comics. And even though this is a real Joker thug, I don't think so. And then here he is next to some DC Direct Arkham City Joker thugs. You can see we got Mr. Hammer there, several Joker thugs, as well as a couple tightened up Joker thugs custom in the background. And then here he is next to some Mattel Movie Master Joker thugs. And then just because here he is next to Harley Quinn and some of her thugs. And then here he is on stage with a cult of Joker fans worshipping him. You can imagine Harley Quinn around the corner getting quite jealous. So overall I'm going to say I do like this figure. I like him probably more than I should. This figure is a huge improvement over the previous Mattel release. But it's a little bit too late. Had we gotten this figure 10 years ago, I would be crazy happy with this guy. As is right now, I still like him a lot, and he's definitely an upgrade from the previous figure. But I'm not super, super thrilled for him. If I were to rate this figure, I'd give him a 7 out of 10. I'd probably give him an 8 out of 10 if this was 10 years ago, or we hadn't got so many of these Dark Knight Jokers over the years. And it also seems like kind of a waste of a signature spot. Because we've gotten so many of these figures, and there are so many other characters I'd love to get in the small window that Mattel has a license left for. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add it to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching, and I will talk to you guys real soon.